Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, is your heart full of joy this morning? Are you growing in the Lord Jesus? Are you a little bit different today than you were yesterday? Are you hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Do you feel much compelled to spend time in the Word of God? Are you longing for Christian fellowship with other brothers and sisters who are alive in Jesus? Well, if the seed of God has been born within you, if you've truly been born again, then friends, your answer to that question is certainly yes. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about. I have spent the morning in the book of First John. What a fabulous book that is. We did a study on it, and yet how incomplete that study, because every time we read the Bible the Holy Spirit enlightens us to some new truth. And sometimes the new truth that we are enlightened to is an old truth, a simple truth that somehow we have overlooked because we feel like as we grow in the Lord, we leave those elementary things behind. But we must be very careful not to do that, friends, because it is the elementary things that position us and help us remain in our Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, we are told to abide in Him, to position ourselves in Him. And if we do that, we will remain sin-free. But the moment we step out of Him and we act on our own behalf, according to our own feelings and emotions, according to our own mindset, and understanding. It is then that we find ourselves fallen and we must repent, confess our sin, and reposition ourselves back in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why 1 John tells us in chapter 3 verse 6, whosoever abideth in Jesus sinneth not. Well, friends, we can't argue with that. The simple fact of the matter is, is that if we are sinning, or even if we have a momentary lapse of judgment and we find ourselves in sin, it's simply because we have removed ourselves from the person of Jesus, and now we are walking on our own accord. But if we will focus all of our effort and all of our attention to abide in Him constantly, just as the Bible promises us, we will be without sin. For again, whosoever abides in him does not sin. And that leads us into the thought that I would like to share with you this morning, which comes out of chapter 2, and we're going to begin in verse 12. And what we need to understand as we read this is that there are stages to the Christian growth. Biblically speaking, some of us watching today are children in the Lord. Some of us are young men in the Lord, and some of us are old men in the Lord. And what defines the difference in each of those is simply our disciplines and our obedience. And we'll talk about that further in a moment, but let's begin at chapter 12, and let's read the next few verses, and then let's discuss them together. Now, John says, I write unto you, little children, stage number one in the Christian life, because your sins have been forgiven. And they've been forgiven because you have accepted and received the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. And that's where you are at right now. You don't know how to feed yourself. You don't know how to walk as a follower of Jesus. You don't know how to talk as a follower of Jesus. You are a child in the Lord, deeply in love with Jesus, recognizing what he has done for you, but you have much to learn as you go from a child to a young man, and then from a young man to an old man, or to a father, as John puts it. 
Well, now he speaks to the fathers in verse 13, and he says, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. That word known is very key. It means that over time you have spent much time with God the Father, with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you recognize his spirit in your life. Now, it would be obvious the more time we spend with him, the more we're going to come to know him. We're going to fully know by experience what moves him. We're going to know him in the tiniest of details. You see, if you have a new acquaintance, you may think that you know them. But if you talk to someone who has known them for years, you're going to find that they know the tiny details, the little things about that person that you're not yet aware of. And so it is with our relationship with God. Well, now John says, I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Not overcoming the wicked one. You have overcome the wicked one. As John chapter 5 verse 18 says, we know that whosoever is born of God sins not. He that is begotten of God keeps himself. He keeps himself pure. He keeps himself righteous. He keeps himself separated from the world and therefore from the wicked one. And notice this, the wicked one toucheth him not. Why? Because he has left his childhood and now he is an overcomer of the wicked one. He is abiding in Christ. He is true to the necessary disciplines in the Christian life. He is in constant fellowship with the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. He is spending much time in the Word of God and therefore he is learning the Word of God, the will of God. And he has a fortified wall of righteousness built around him that keeps him from the wicked one. And so the question now would be, what is it that is so necessary for my Christian growth? What are these disciplines that you speak of, pastor? What are these elementary principles that we must abide in, that we must remain in? that we must carry in our spiritual backpack as we continue on in our journey. And the answer for that, the most critical element of our Christian lives, we can find in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Now, we should already know from all the darkness that surrounds us, from all the evil that is taking place in the world, we should know that at this moment, this is not God's world. Although he created it and he is the rightful owner of it, right now it's under the dominion of the powers of darkness, under Lucifer, under Satan. And so if this is his world, then it's obvious that we should understand we are to separate ourselves from this world. We're not to be a part of this world. We're not to think like this world. We're not to talk like this world. We're not to act like this world. We're not to involve ourselves in the pleasures and entertainments of this world, but we're to come out from among them, separate ourselves, live holy lives, and as verse 2 begins in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but instead we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our mind? We have to take what's in there, remove it, and fill it with something different. That's why Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Brothers, whatsoever things are true. This would, what did Jesus say is true? Jesus said in John 17, Thy word is truth. So whatsoever things you read from the word of God, whatsoever things are honest, or honorable before God. Whatsoever things are just, these would be the good works that we do that God has commanded us to do unto one another. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, or whatsoever things please God, whatsoever things are of good report, which would be reputable. If there be any virtue, if there be any moral excellence, 
If there be any praise, anything that is praiseworthy, think on these things. Now back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be transformed or think on things that we've just been commanded, things that we've just been told by Paul in Philippians, and by doing so, we will renew our mind. You've heard the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. Well, the same is true, friends. The word of God in, the word of God out. You can tell how much time someone spends in the word of God simply by listening to their conversation. And so Paul is basically telling us, along with John from our text, that if we want to grow from children into young men and young men into fathers, we begin by feeding on the word of God daily. This will transform us from the inside out through the renewing of our mind. And then we will prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, if you've been with us very long, friends, you know that this is not a new message on this channel. If there's anything we promote, if there's anything we exhort you to, that we would have you to feel guilty for not doing, it's reading the Bible, reading God's Word. Not just a verse or two a day, but diving deep into the pages of Scripture and really reading God's Word. I mean, even if you read the message of Jesus through the four Gospels, you'll see that Jesus emphasizes the reading of God's word more than any other discipline we as the people of God can have. And the reason for that is if we read God's word, we're going to pray. We're going to obey what we are reading. We're going to talk to him through our spirits about what we are reading. And the subsequent reality of that is the fact that we're going to grow. We're going to grow because we're reading and we're obeying. And we reread, and the Holy Spirit enlightens a new truth to us, and now we obey that. And we reread, and the Holy Spirit makes a new truth known to us, and we obey that. And so there's a constant, continual state of obedience, of growth, of Christian discipline. And it is for this reason, as we are told in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And as with anything, this doesn't come natural. It requires great effort, great focus, great work and discipline on our part. But if we are faithful in doing these things, we will see growth in our spiritual lives. We will be able to look back and see how far God has brought us from, and we will be able to look forward and anticipate with great joy and hope where God is going to take us. And so whether you're a child in your relationship with God right now, whether you are a young man or whether you are a father, this speaks to every one of us because it tells us where we are to begin, where we are to abide, and how we are to end. And what we're going to find is the same elements that were so critical to our new life in Jesus are the same elements, the same disciplines that we will find ourselves still being faithful in even as we sit before the Lord as spiritual fathers, as spiritual old men. Well, friends, I pray that this has challenged you today. I pray that if you have been complacent in your Christian disciplines, you will return to these simple elementary truths and that you will find them spiritual nourishment to your soul and you will become a true overcomer in and through Jesus Christ. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're with us. I pray that your journey will be blessed today. I pray that as you spend time in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to new truth. And I pray that He will equip you and strengthen you so that you can not only be hearers or readers of the Word, but you will become obedient to and become doers of the Word. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.